Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphany. We have a ton of news to cover today. All right, so, um, and this weekend I will be honoring requests from Old Man Crypto as well as New Anomaly in the members only section. Okay, so let's begin here with this article and it's titled, this is from CryptoNewsFlash.com and it's titled, Ripple is going to win big as Judge Torres ruled against the SEC. Dash, will the XRP price explode to $1? In the, like, is this in correlation with a victory? One dollar? You're grossly underestimating what XRP can do, especially given all of the big entities that want to step in. It's just, I mean, it's really a matter of how many of them step in all at once when victory is declared. But let's read this little tidbit here, okay? It says, while ruling for the Ripple Labs Inc.'s legal brawl with the US SEC is expected to be announced soon, attorney Jeremy Hogan has dropped an interesting update on a pertinent issue involving the market regulator. On Twitter, Hogan highlighted that Judge Annalisa Torres uh, previously rendered a verdict against the SEC in a matter involving mining firm Rio Tinto. Interestingly, the SEC filed an appeal against Judge Torres' decision. Wow, really? Hoping for a better outcome. However, according to attorney Hogan, the appellate court upheld Judge Torres' decision. This is all amazing news. Very handy, right? I'm keeping this in the back of my mind. But let's continue on here. It says, uh, I was re just reminded, this is the tweet from Jeremy Hogan. It says, I was just reminded of a case in which Judge Torres ruled against the SEC on a key issue. The SEC appealed. The appellate court upheld Judge Torres. SEC versus Rio Tinto. Then it says here, just don't ask how long the whole process took. Okay, so listen, we, we all know uh, it's in the hands of the judge. We're not sure how long everything is going to take. I think that... Uh, we, we find something out in 2023. We went over the timelines in that video yesterday and they gave some interesting timelines. OK, um, I think once that does happen, boom, the boom begins in 2023. Then we know about Michael legislation in 2024. You can kind of see where my timeline is going. Um, I'll go a little deeper, deeper into my personal timelines. in, like I said, the members only video that I'm going to do in response to new anomalies question. Um, but then you have MICA legislation in Europe. That's big money over there. We can run wild over there in 2024. So now what we're looking at, if we get a, a, a positive outcome in 2023, we can begin, begin to run wild in the United States. You're going to get this initial pop, but for investors like myself, Ahab investors hunting the white whale, looking for that big money, it's just a beginning there, right? So we can start to uh, you know actualize some of those uh, partnerships and and it depends if it happens in the middle of 2023, it happens in June, like they're like they anticipate one of the one of the dates they anticipate. Then we have a little bit of wiggle room to run wild and bring in some part, part more partnerships, actuate some, maybe get some things up and running. And that could that could affect the price. OK, um, but it all depends. See, these things, we have to be very adjustable because we're going by catalyst and variables that, you know, a lot of them are unknown variables or they're rather uh, very adjustable variables, right? So let's say I'm thinking that way if, if we get a positive outcome around the June time. But now they remember in that video yesterday, they, they also put forth the idea that uh, uh, we could receive a positive outcome somewhere around December. Now, keep in mind, no one really knows, only the judge. No one really knows. But let's say it happens around December. That's not a lot of wiggle room to really get to actuate things in 2023, obviously, right? That means everything will be pushed back to 2024, which means that the timeline will have to be adjusted again. I'm, I'm trying to take a very, very rational approach here, okay? So, but that's not a bad thing in my humble opinion. 2024 is not that far away, you know? Um, so, but if indeed uh, our freedom, <laughs> our regulatory clarity, you know, uh, the ability to actuate on some of our partnerships in the U.S. gets pushed back to 2024, then we're looking at both the rise of the XRPL and XRP in the United States and in Europe at the same time. You tell me what that can do to that price. You let me know. What do you think? I mean, it's a team game over here. I'm not here just to, to tell you something and hope that you believe it or not, anything like that. I'm not here to convince you, but let's exchange ideas. You tell me what it like. Can, can you imagine 
right? Whether it's set up or not. Some people believe this is on purpose. Can you imagine if we got regulatory clarity in the US and we have regulatory clarity in Europe at the same time and we could scrape up those trillions? Now, of course, listen, another variable I'm taking into account, another mechanism is obviously how fast, how fast can they actuate on these partnerships? Do they actuate on these partnerships? We have to watch all of that, all of that, okay? I just want, don't wanna just go off of hopes and dreams. I need to see things and I'm going to adjust my thoughts accordingly. Of course, I'm in this for the long haul, but still, in order to know when something's going to happen, I need to pay attention to all of that. Okay, let's, let's, um, let's move on to another article here, all right? Because I wanna try to get through a good amount of these. So this next article here is from fxempire.com. I was, check them out. I was thoroughly impressed with this article. Let's, let's begin here. This section is titled, U.S. recessionary jitters and SEC versus Ripple silence weighed. It says there were no SEC versus Ripple case updates to garner investor interest. The lack of court rulings left XRP investors on tender hooks. Not really, not me, not the type of investor I am. I mean, look, there's a, there's a lot of different types of XRP holders and we're not all the same. We're in the same team. We're all Spartans carrying our shields, all warriors. No doubt about that, but we're all different. So like, uh, individual like myself, we're here for that big money. Then you have some people that are, are looking to scrape at a low. They're sitting on a ton of XRP, by the way, so it doesn't take a crazy price for them to see delicious gains. And they're gonna scrape some off the top, right? They have different percentages where they're gonna scrape and different uh, um, prices where they're gonna scrape different percentages off the top, right? So, I mean, you have investors like that. So no, I don't think where any of us is shook. I don't think any of us is getting our ankles broken for lack of a better word. Um, you know, so no, I don't think investors are on tenor hooks. We're just being patient. And I think people are excited, very excited, right? And uh, XRP Army has a lot of fire in their belly, <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. You know, same thing with the XL with XLM holders, a lot of overlap there. Uh, let's continue one here. It says, U.S. economic indicators weighed on XRP in the broader market during the afternoon. The latest round of U.S. stats revealed more cracks in the U.S. economy as the Fed uh, uh, perseveres in bringing inflation to target. Really? You believe that? All right, I can respect that. We're gonna have, I'm going to respectfully disagree with you on that. And I think they're about to make a, a tremendous mistake, but we'll go over that another time. It says initial jobless claims increased from 229,000 to 242,000 with non-farm productivity sliding by 2.7% in Q1. Farms about to have a big problem as well with certain things that they're trying to do where, well, I'll be careful with that. We'll cover that another time. But farms are gonna have a big problem. Same problem they're having around the world where they're requiring, requiring them to negate certain, um, certain um, ingredients, rather, or, or chemicals, rather, uh, that they're using to make soil fertile, right? They, certain um, entities have a problem with that. But if they do that, that would be a, a very devastating hit to the to far, to farming industry. Not to mention, not only that, but they're just, just um, large companies in the government with eminent domain, I believe as well. Uh, the use of that have been buying up a lot of farmland. Listen, all of these industries that have been damaged, I'm telling you now, and it's just my humble opinion, I could be wrong, but all of these industries, real estate, they're gonna need DLT. Uh, farming, they're going to need DLT. Look, the, the ability to move capital, the ability to, the ability to fractionalize uh, how you can sell something, it gives you access to so much more capital. Just like, let's take uh, real estate, definitely need it, especially commercial real estate. Look, you can fractionalize this building. We don't have to sell this building all as one, uh, under one price, right? So you have an overall price, but we fractionalize that building. We sell it to 100 people. We sell a piece to 100 people. It makes it much easier to move. And let's get some capital going right now. Instead of selling it to one entity, we can sell it to like 100 different entities, right? And um, it still adds up to the same amount. They need DLT. That's the new financial system. XRP makes it through this. XRP, XLM, Algorand, the bank coins will have clarity together, in my humble opinion. Their use cases are too similar. There's no battle to have after that with them. The rest of the industry will still probably have a fight on their hands with regulators. All right, so so all of this is crucial. This is why I watch this. All right, so let's continue on here. It says, however, unit labor costs surged by 6.3%. Economists forecast non-farm non productivity to fall by 1.8% and unit labor costs to increase by 5.5%. ,5 Significantly, the latest economic indicators wiped out bets of a June interest rate hike. According to the CME FedWatch tool, the probability of a 25 basis point in June interest rate hike fell 
from 16.3% to 0%, 0%, okay, whoa, for a, a over 24 hours. In contrast, the bets on a 25 basis point interest rate cut increased from 6.6% to 9.2%. Okay, I see there's a balance there. That makes, now that makes more sense to me after I read the next part. Um, oh man, somebody left a hilarious comment in the comment section yesterday. They, in that, in their comment, they, they used, they, they used a few of my keywords, modicum, bevy, and, and myriad. <laughs> I do use those words a lot. <laughs> I do use them a lot. Oh man, we have some good commenters here. Hey, one time somebody spoke to me in Latin. You know how rare it is for uh, 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 those of us in the world who uh, communicate in Latin? Oh, I, I mean, I, I, we have some brilliant commenters. I, just, I thoroughly enjoy it. I really do. Um, and I love to see that these there's uh, these very high intellectual people and clever people and fun people and people with love in their hearts still, still out there in the world. I like that. Uh, I like that, that exposure. So anyway, here's another article here. It's on uh, U.Today. By the way, big shout out to Asti, Keith, Matthew, Blockchain663, uh, Z-Rex, uh, Ahmed, uh, old man crypto, new anomaly, uh, you know, on and on. So many great people out there. Uh, Akareko. Uh, so this article here is from uh, U.Today's title, XRPL to receive new DeFi use cases as decentralized ID proposal goes live. All right, let's read this little tidbit here. And obviously, you know, digital ID has been all the rage as of late. It says, Emi Yoshikawa, Ripple's VP of Strategy and Operations has shared more details on the decentralized ID XLS 40D proposal that recently went live. Uh, earlier, the research team released a spec for native support of decentralized identity XLS 40D for community review. According to Yoshikawa, the decentralized ID currently proposed to the XRPL community is DID as a native feature of the protocol, protocol layer compliant with the W3C DID standard. They're getting, I mean, they're moving rapidly with this and I understand why. Let's continue. It says the World Wide Web's consortium, W3C, standardized decentralized identifiers enable, enable verifiable self-sovereign digital identities. Are you sure about that? Self-sovereign. So they're not, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if I remember. I know Hedera, I believe Hedera is quantum proof. Um, Algorand is quantum proof. Are these quantum proof? I mean, do they need to be quantum proof? So I, I have questions. I Well, let me continue on here. Uh, the XLS 40D proposal aims to define a DID format for XRP ledger that confirms the W3C DID standards that can be created, owned, and controlled by an XRPL account holder. XRPL's upcoming developments. It says on February the 22nd, Ripple developers put forth a new interoperability standard, XLS-38D, that will allow for a cross-chain bridge uh, to enable interoperability between various blockchain networks that's going to come in handy. Like I said, we continue to move forward and advance what we have now, right? It becomes better. And that's why we stay ahead of the legacy system. And that's great. That's another reason why they're going to need us. But let's continue on here. So regardless of the underlying protocols of, or programming languages used by different blockchains, the proposed standard will allow users to transfer digital assets and data between them. All right, so listen, this is going to feed into an article at some point uh, soon, uh, within the next few chapters, I have an XLM based article and uh, it's about the White House. Actually, it's all like, listen, all of these central banks, governmental entities have been going wild about digital ID. So this is going to be something major. OK, uh, let's move on to another article here. Oh, so actually, this is the article now. This is from BeingCrypto.com and it's titled U.S. government wants to lead distributed ledger innovations. This is White House unveils strategy for digital identity and distributed and distributed ledger. Wait a minute. Let me tell you something here. Now, this is just my opinion, but it's based on things I've seen. First of all, I believe XRP is heavily going to be involved. The XRPL is heavily going to be involved in this. Now, that's just based on them moving at a rapid pace about, you know, a development of these digital IDs. That's number one. But let's put XRP to the side. This is really about XLM. You know, there was about maybe a month or two back when the White House called Stellar. They had a deep conversation and, and, and really calmed the minds of Stellar. Stellar has had a, a close relationship with the White House for years, with the United States government on different levels for years. Right. 
And so after they have that conversation, which I would love to know the details of that conversation, right? Uh, if we can get a transcript, which I know they're not going to put out, but it would be a lovely thing. I'm pretty sure that they collected the information in order to make this possible statement. Let's read this little tidbit here. It says, distributed ledger technology is, is, a, is fundamental for the functioning of blockchain. The idea is to simultaneously distribute the data in a network of devices to enhance the immutability and transparency of critical information. The U.S. wants to lead innovation in distributed ledger technology. That right there seems a little bit skewed in my humble opinion because they're behind everyone else everybody is ahead of them everyone but let's continue on it says on thursday the white house released a u.s government national standard strategy for critical and emerging technology unquote report the report mentions the government's ambitions to lead in eight new areas so this could be an indication like i said we've been discussing it this year that they're ready to so-called flip the switch uh, but they're behind everyone else. Simple as that. Let's go ahead and get this done. We just need regulatory clarity and then get out of the way. Let us do what it is that we do. And um, I think you're going to see these things fly. But it'll take time. Everything will happen in waves and degrees. That's exactly how I think. Um, there's a multitude of timelines for, for our various use cases and industries that will be using these particular technologies, especially like on Stellar as an example. Um, but let's continue to read here. It says, the report mentions the government's ambitions to lead in, in eight new areas, such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, digital identity infrastructure, which obviously is going to run across chain, definitely could run across Stellar, hence why they've been, uh, you know, they've been working very hard to advance and focus very heavily on smart contract capability, things of that nature. It says, and DLT, distributed ledger technologies, that's us. And they just had a conversation with Stellar. Listen, I believe Stellar is, is going to have a heavy hand in this. But like I said, it's just my opinion. But it's based on them having that relationship and that conversation, they made it. They, they definitely put it made us aware that they were called by the White House or contacted by the White House and had that and had an exchange of information of sorts. Uh, why would they do that? They were excited about it. So it must have been a potent something potent happening. Then we have this. You tell me what you think. I think they're in on it. I think St I think Stella's going to do a lot in the United States once the opportunity is there. I really do. It says report for a critical and emerging emerging technology mentions a proactive and sustained long term approach is required to ensure that the United States remains a global leader. That's already over. I mean, everybody, like I said, everyone else is ahead unless they know something we don't and they're able to actuate everything at a rapid pace. That's the only way that th that could work and them to take that leadership position once again. Other than that, I don't see it happening. Um, you know, if like I said, if they um, issue regulatory clarity, get out the way, let Stellar and Ripple do what it is that they're best at Algorand as well. Then, yes, I think that they can catch up quickly and they would have to support everything that Stellar and Ripple and Algorand are doing, which would be very beneficial and positive for everybody across the board. So. It says uh, a proactive and sustained long term approach is required to ensure that the United States remains a global leader in contributing to the development of fair merit based standards for uh, critical and emerging technology. That is right now. That's laughable, but we'll see what happens over uh, this next little short period of time. OK, so now. Let's go here. This article is from finance.yahoo.com and it's titled Brace Yourselves. Banking crisis This is having uh, ridden to the rescue of California lender First Republic over the weekend. J.P. Morgan superstar boss had a message for financial markets. It's shotgun takeover of First Republic heralded the end of the crisis. Really? You really believe that? Now watch how uh, watch how this flips back on this particular uh, head of J.P. Morgan shows that they don't know what they're talking about. Let's continue. It says, he should know better than to be drawn into realms of speculation about things he has no control of. Exactly. It says, but then Wall Street is so differential to figures like Demond that they start to believe they can walk on water. Still, the speed with which Demond, which is the leader of J.P. Morgan, Demond's words have come back to haunt him comes as a shock. A mere 40 out, 48 hours later. And it looked as though the game was up for yet another regional American bank, Pacific West. We've been reading about it all day long. Another bank is in trouble. Just they're dropping like flies, like flies. You tell me they don't need us. It says here. 
Yet another uh, regional American bank, the fourth, the fourth since the end of March. That's mind blowing. And yet you have uh, Jerome Powell saying everything is okay. You see how they try to rock you to sleep? They try to rock you to sleep while you drown on the Titanic. Oh, it's not sinking while the boat's going under the water. Water's hitting your ankles. They're still telling you everything's okay. Right, okay. New financial system coming in hot. They literally need us. And we don't need them. We could do it outright. Wallets, we could issue wallets outright. Anyway, says the following morning, Western Alliance. Oh, my, my apologies. Says on Wednesday, shares in PacWest plunged by as much as 60, uh, 60%. And after hours trading, prompting the bank to uh, announce that it was seeking salvation either through emergency cash call or like its stricken rivals in the arms of a bigger competitor, the um, competitor. The following morning, Western Alliance was forced to deny it was exploring a fire sale despite its price plummeting 40 percent at one stage. Zion's Bank Corp and Comerica. We're also under the microscope. Keep these banks' names in your mind. Write them down. We need to keep an eye on them. All of these are pieces to the puzzle. All of these can affect how quickly the new financial system gets deployed. The fall, the, the slow fall or rapid fall of the, of the legacy financial system has a great effect on our timelines, which again, these are other variables, some known, some unknown, that can cause that timeline to flux greatly, all right? And you have to make up your own mind really in the end when you think everything is going to, to come about. Um, and of course, that's also going to be affected by how much of something you hold. You hold a great amount, you hold a little. Do you need a, a high price to be satisfied? Do you need a low price to be satisfied? None of what I say here is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just putting out the idea. I think that's a reasonable approach to, to coming up with timelines. All of our timelines are going to be different. But let's... Um, Let's go here, all right? Go to another article. Now it says here, this is from Watcher.Guru, and it says here, BRICS currency, could it threaten US dollars global reserve status? Well, we read from a, an expert yesterday. I believe it was in that video. I don't think that was in a members only video. I can't remember which one, but an expert saying that, yes, it's already under threat. <laughs> it's already, all the pros are saying the same thing. Now, it's not about the UN getting used right now. That's not the threat. A lot of, a lot of these uh, legacy system economists and pros and bank heads try to point to the UN, say, oh, look at the UN, look at the percentage it has. Well, like 2%, 2.7% in the world, and, and, and the dollar has 58% uh, in the world, something like that. That's not the threat. The threat is the common currency they're coming up with. It hasn't been actuated yet. I don't know, people are gonna add that to my list of words that I use. <laughs> Modicum, Myriad, Bevy, and then Bevy is my, one of my newer ones, and actuated. <laughs> I love it. All right, so let's read this little tidbit here. It says, Kristalina Georgieva, the IMS Managing Director, made clear their view on the US dollar status as reserve currency. Well, they're supposed to protect the dollar. Let's keep reading though. Specifically by stating there is no alternative, not yet, because they haven't actuated their common currency just yet, but they're working on it rapidly. And they have a great portion of the world is either a member of the BRICS nation or wants to join the BRICS nation. Let's continue on here. So specifically stating there is no alternative while assuring she, quote, does not see it coming anytime soon. She's supposed to say that. She's, they're, they're, <laughs> so they're supposed to say that. Conversely, the rise of BRICS represents an interesting point of observation. Reports ahead of the annual BRICS summit taking place this summer have stated that more than 19 countries are seeking membership in the bloc. You have to take them serious. You'd be a fool not to. But then again, I know that they're protecting themselves. That's why they've been buying gold at a rapid rate. You don't buy gold unless you're trying to preserve your value. And the only reason you will buy gold to try to preserve your value is because you don't trust your reserve currency to maintain that value. The, the dollar's been in flux for quite some time anyway. But we're talking about it'll be in massive volatility. It'll have massive flux if in, indeed it's going to be diminished greatly by the BRICS nations, which have already been laying plans and attempting to do that by trading in their own local currencies. This is just logical in my humble opinion. They've been buying gold, but they don't want the people to run from the dollar. They don't want, you know, they want to keep the people there. This is how their businesses function. Their businesses, uh, unfortunately, they're foolish and their businesses don't function off of something solid like gold or silver or platinum, palladium, whatever, copper even. Um, 
So they have to, they have a vested interest to keep the people locked in fiat as long as they can, even if the people have to go down with the ship. But let's continue on here. It says, nevertheless, the expansion of the collection to 24 countries would garner more than 47% of the world's population and 37% of the world's GDP. That's power. And that's not where they're going to stop either. There's so many more, so many different things that they can do to have an impact on the dollar. And, and here's the thing, the United States hasn't taken any type of um, evasive action or protective action. They're not guarding themselves. That's what's strange about this. And this is why a lot of people say they believe that is planned. They're, they're not guarding themselves against whatever attack is coming. You tell me, if you think differently, I'd like to hear it. It says, additionally, BRICS nations are major oil producers. That's what I'm saying, they have a lot of power. It's not just about the numbers we heard, it's about what they can do. Major oil producers, which would lead to the dethroning of the petrodollar. Currently, the five nations are vital contributors to the world's oil production. Moreover, moreover, Saudi Arabia has already shifted its international oil settlements, recently utilizing the Chinese yuan. Yuan is not the threat, though. Uh, it says a step that is critical for eventual establishment of a BRICS currency. Moreover, Argentina announced that it would settle international deals using the Chinese yuan as well. It's just a placeholder for the BRICS common currency. That's all. Uh, uh, signaling a similar turn away from the greenback, subsequently setting in motion a global de-dollarization de trend that feels difficult, if not impossible, to reverse at this point. What may be more concerning is that Argentina's switch from the dollar to the yuan was rooted in more in, were rooted more in triple-digit inflation and a dollar reserve shortage. However, the Chinese yuan is still pegged to the U.S. dollar, uh, conversely, showcasing both the macroeconomic factors of the dollar's fall and its necessity in global economy. OK, we're going to stop there. Let's move on to this next article here. All right. So this one here is from Kitco.com. Now, this is powerful. Keep this number in mind. Because if it's going to leave the banks at some point, even if you have gold cards that you can you can uh, extract that value by using your gold, your gold debit card. You know, a lot of people have these gold debit cards now and you can extract that value. Your gold sitting in the vault. You don't necessarily have the gold bars and such, even though I love gold bars, but whatever. So you're using your debit card, extracting that value from your gold that's in your vault and using it outright. Most people are not going to do that. They're going to want to liquidate the value of that gold into something, even if it's an alternative currency that's not fiat. You know, you got XRP, XLM, something like that, even like Bitcoin. Um, so this capital that we're about to talk about could move theoretically, theoretically into one of our currencies, XRP, XLM, Algorand, even Bitcoin. A lot of, a lot of people on the channel hold Bitcoin as well. It says $10 trillion dollars could be wiped from banking sector as more banks collapse. Of course, it has a little thing here about Bitcoin as well, but I'm not a Bitcoin holder. So even though, hey, all power to Bitcoin holders, more power to them, and hopefully they do well, I just don't read that part because I have no interest in it. Right? So let's go here. So $10 trillion in equity could be wiped out from the banking system as more banks fail, according to Greg Foss, Bitcoin strategist and executive director at Validus Power Corp. Foss, who has more than three decades of experience in high yield credit trading, responded to the Federal Reserve Chair uh, Jerome Powell's recent statement that the U.S. banking sector is sound, quote, sound and resilient, unquote. That is insanity. Bank after bank is falling and collapsing. There's going to be more, by the way. So many of them are at risk and banking co confidence is at an all time low. For him to say that is, is unbelievable. Let's move past that nonsense as, quote, I think Jerome Powell is a horrible poker player. <laughs> I would agree with that, sir. I'm a great poker player, by the way. If you ever want to play, trust me on this. I will wipe the floor with you. But anyway, let's, let's move on here. So, unquote, Foss told Michelle McCory, le, le, uh, lead anchor and editor-in-chief at Kitco News, quote, there's another shoe to fall for banks. Or, as Elon says, it could be an anvil. I agree with that. Look, there's a there's something bad on the horizon. People don't want to hear that. So what can you do? I can't force it on them. You can't force it on them. They don't. A lot of people, they don't want to believe it. So they're not going to protect themselves. That's there's nothing that we can do about it. All we can do is tell the people, inform them, do the research, pre present them with the evidence. And people have to make up their own minds how they feel and if they want to protect themselves or not. That's all we can do. Uh, but I agree with that 100 percent. 
Foss cited Elon Musk, who claimed in an interview with former Fox News host Tucker Carlson that more banks will fail as commercial real estate loans default. <laughs> Haven't I been talking about commercial real estate for about two months now straight? Right. I told you, watch the commercial real estate. I've been saying that for like three videos in a row now. Watch commercial real estate. I think I said in the video yesterday, in the video before that, watch commercial real estate. There's a problem coming. Those small banks are in trouble. They're the, they're the biggest lenders. Man, my, I mean, my word. There's so many problems in the, in, in the banking industry. I, I can't believe that it's, it has survived this long. I really can't. And sure, listen, we're here to take the banking system's money, not to trust them, not to trust them, but to take their money. And the fact that they are crumbling will send them running, more of their banks running to us, especially the small banks. And that's where we need to really be watching. But all banks are at risk. Let's continue on here. It says, quote, the biggest banks are too big to fail, which means they will get, a, they will get bailed out. Well, that means they fail, but they, they might get bailed out. Sure. Um, I wouldn't say too big to fail. I go, listen, this is why I respect the Bank of England. A little bit, a little bit, because they had the guts to come out in an article and say last year that their none of their banks are too big to fail. That's honesty. That's I respect honesty. But it seems like here in the U.S., there's no honesty to say that. No, they're not too big to fail. Listen, the Fed is having problems. The Fed itself is having problems. They came out saying, hey, listen, a lot of what we have is is uh, uh, uh is illiquid, has been rendered illiquid. They're having, they don't know what they're doing. They're confused. They're running in circles. What solutions have they provided? Not none. So you have to keep an eye on that. I, I don't believe in that. It's too big to fail type of idea, but that's just how I feel. We can agree to disagree, says quote, but that doesn't mean that shareholders get bailed out. Of course not, right? Bail-ins, keep that in mind. And this is where a lot of money can be lost. They, there are probably by estimation, at least $10 trillion of bank equity Globally, that can literally be wiped out if systems, if the system fails. All right, so now let's move on to another article here. I wanted to read and cover this article here because, I mean, just the title alone is potent. Look into this, research this, and it, it, and it sort of supports what I was just saying, what the Fed has said themselves, what the, what the Bank of England said last year. No bank is too big to fail. It says here, with the title is this, U.S. banks, Fed, technically insolvent. Max Kaiser states, and then of course he promotes Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin ASAP. Um, that's up to you if you feel that way. Uh, I prefer gold and you know, then to diversify with the bank coins, of course, as they rise and such like that, there's smart investments, but as far as, far as a store of, and protection of value, protection of value, now nah, I go with gold every single time, a little bit of silver too, sprinkle a little silver on top. It says prominent Bitcoin supporter, Max Kaiser has taken to Twitter to comment on the recent collapse of First Republic Bank. This was not the first large U.S. bank that has gone down. Well, we know that. Let's, let's skip that little part. This is, then it goes into Silvergate Bank and Silicon Valley Bank, of course. It says he repeated now saying that the world of fiat money is disintegrating. Yes, well, the, us, bank and the, us researchers in the bank coin uh, family have been saying that for quite some time. It says, and quote, it's all going to zero against Bitcoin. Against Bitcoin. Okay. If you feel that way. Uh, it says Kaiser believes that banks in the U.S. are now technically insolvent and quote, so is the Fed. Well, we could say that for a long time, actually. Um, just look at how the banking system works, right? It's a uh, question. It's very, very questionable. Very questionable. It says prominent crypto analyst Michael Van de, Van de Pop. My apologies if I mispronounced that name. My apologies. It says also believe that banks failing now is bullish for the flagship digital currency. It's, it's bullish for the bank coins. They need, people need a way, a safe way where their capital is not going to get taken from them, right? In the future, which we can have acceptable stability, just like gold, I've said this before, right? They're gonna need mechanisms and systems and wallets where they can store their capital, move their capital through, especially P2P and we can get some cards going, a, myri a myriad of cards. We can get a myriad of cards going, debit cards and credit card style cards to, to we're pretty much the replacement of the legacy system. That's what we are. I know we've been congealing with them, but as they're rapidly collapsing, there's no telling how much of them is going to be left. And we can do all of that. So that capital can definitely come into the bank coins, in my humble opinion. That's what they're made to do, literally. Right. All right. So I think that that's where a lot bank coin, a Bitcoin will get some. 
there's enough money to go around. Bitcoin will have its fill. It always is always that way. And they've done a good job of making Bitcoin better. But XRP, XO, and Algorand are going to have a big, a, a, a big fill of it, in my humble opinion. My humble opinion. And I could be wrong. I'm not asking you to agree with me. I could be wrong. But that's just personally how I feel. We can take a big chunk of it. I'm not saying that is a guarantee. We can take a big chunk of that. I think that uh, we will serve the purpose that we have been made to serve. And yeah, that, that could definitely have an impact on that price. But that's just my humble opinion. Uh, so this is something to keep to keep in mind. Technically fed, technically insolvent. Now, here's another thing I want to throw in there. Just keep in mind uh, how the rest of the world is trying to switch to, uh, you know, uh, commodity backed assets in the U.S. has not. You cannot have a fiat currency in the world where the bulk of the world, which most of them are jo trying to join the BRICS nations, are trying to move to commodity backed assets. And you have something that's backed by nothing. What your military might. What, what I mean, what is it? And, and then the some of the countries that you're trying to you were before. This is what they say you were protecting have also left that protection that you offered. And they're going to members of the BRICS nation now that they feel more secure. Right. Um, we all know who those 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 particular countries are who have been greatly castigated. So I don't think that they're going to be rejoining the fold with the West and complying with the West. So so that's going to be damaging to fiat currencies as well. Right. So I keep that in mind also. So now let's move on to another article here. So. This is from uh, stltoday.com and it's titled, Pressure Grows for Regulatory Intervention as Bank Route Deepens. So once again, it's just, it just shows that um, regulations really don't do much. Uh, it couldn't stop the banking system from going down, but let's read this little tidbit here. It says, pressure is growing on US regulators to take further steps to shore up the country's banking sector as renewed route in regional lenders shares shares force pack west bank corp to explore options to bolster his balance sheet wall street executives and bank analysts called for regulators to quickly provide more protection for bank deposits and consider other backstops arguing only an intervention could stop the crisis from spiraling although it was unclear if the authorities would step in quote investors are clearly continuing to focus on remaining players that are deemed the weakest unquote wrote ubs banking analyst erica Najar Naj najarian on thursday quote to stop the cascade before the market literally drives more bank failures we wonder if it's time for the treasury and the fed to step up and potentially create some sort of backstop i mean i don't think it's the, just the markets the markets are taking advantage of it but i mean it's the it's the banks themselves that have failed themselves. And it is the central bank that you're asking for help that has failed them as well. Tell me your long term bonds have not been hurt. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. Interest rates uh, just a disaster when it comes to long term bonds. All right. So now. Then we have this article here. This is from finance.yahoo.com and it's titled Fed's Powell. Don't assume Fed can shield U.S. economy from debt limit default. We never thought that. We don't think that. Respectfully, you haven't been able to shield your own banks, let alone the entirety of the, the, the um, U.S. economy. It says U.S. Federal Reserve is unlikely to be able to protect the U.S. economy from, de from the damage caused by a failure to raise the federal debt ceiling, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said on Wednesday, adding that the government should never be in a position where it is unable to pay all of his bills. That is unbelievable that you can say that with a job that has been done at the Fed over the last few years. I mean, no disrespect, but it's just what I've been seeing. So Powell told a news conference after the, the Fed's latest rate hike decision that resolving the debt ceiling standoff between Republicans and Democrats was a matter of Congress and the Biden administration. Quote, we don't give advice to either side, unquote, Powell said. Quote, we would just point out that it's very important that this be done, unquote. You would love for something to happen because it would take a lot of this, a lot of the <laughs> weight off your shoulders. and It would take that sort of Damocles from over your head. It says a U.S. default would be unprecedented and have, quote, highly uncertain, unquote, and, quote, quite diverse, unquote, con uh, consequences for the U.S. economy. You don't say we know that, sir. We know that. It is just one more uh, sign that these systems within the United States are highly broken, fractured and, you know, corruption and corruption and, and, and decay 
has uh, reared his ugly head. And, uh, you know, listen, this is why you had so many meetings with the distributed ledger technology companies that have been advising you, hey, listen, we can help you solve some of these problems. Uh, they're trying to bring different ideas to the table. You rejected that. And uh, it seems like this is uh, maybe a controlled demolition this is what a lot of my subscribers have said. And I, I think at this point I'm beginning to concur because you haven't taken any measures to protect yourselves against these particular things. And you haven't operated with a clean logic. Just in my humble opinion. They haven't, there's no clear logic on this. So now let's uh, let's move on to this next article here. I wanted to get to this one here because it's very interesting. I see a, a few states doing this. Uh, and then, of course, this moves, uh, you know, uh, simultaneously with a lot of other uh, con uh, countries and states around the world who are also trying to move to asset. I mean, uh, commodity backed assets. Right. So this is from shiftgold.com and it's titled Texas Committee Passes Bill to Create 100 percent Reserve gold and silver backed transactional currencies. Keep in mind when, when uh, Stellar had that, that um, well, this, it was like a senator or congressman, one of them said that they wanted to speak to Danelle Dixon a little bit more about Stellar. I always keep that in mind when it comes to Texas. That individual is from Texas. I don't believe they had one meeting. There's no way you have one conversation, one meeting. If you're that interested in Stellar. I'm pretty sure they had a multitude of them, you know, but we'll keep an eye on that right now. Everything beyond that is just speculation, right? So on May the 2nd, a Texas House committee passed a bill to create 100 percent reserve gold and silver backed transactional currencies. Enactment of this legislation would create an option for people to conduct business in sound money, set the stage to undermine the Federal Reserve's monopoly on money and possibly possibly create a viable alternative to a central bank digital currency. Well, it's going to make a capital that is actually safe for the people to use 100 but that's that's the primary thing make sure that the hard-working people on the ground have something safe that they can pay bills with buy food with okay that so that's really what's important here in my humble opinion it says here representative mark derazio uh introduced hb 4903 so now we can actually look it up on march the 10th and it has since garnered a bipartisan coalition of 42 co-sponsors the legislation would require the state comptroller to establish and provide for the issuance of gold and silver and also establish digital currencies that are digital currencies. <laughs> Stellar is in the game. Listen, listen, XLM is in the game. Stellar's in the game until until I see different. And if I see different, I will adjust my thinking. Let's read it again. And silver uh, It says and also establish digital currencies that are 100% backed by gold and silver. There's no one easier to issue on than Stellar. Oh, I'm getting excited now. Let me calm down. It's the end of the video. And 100% redeemable in cash, gold or silver. Oh, I like gold. I like silver too, though. I like silver. I like eh, platinum. You know, it's okay too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always taking shots at platinum. I just like it. I just like doing it. Platinum is okay. I'm just messing around, just fooling about. It says, uh, <laughs> it says it is defined as quote a precious metal stamp. Specie is is defined as a, a quote precious metal stamped into coins of uniform shape, size, design, content, and purity, suitable for or customarily used as currency, as a medium of exchange, or as the medium of purchase, sale, storage, transfer, or delivery of precious metals in retail or wholesale transactions. In establishing a, establishing a uh, gold and silver specie, the comptroller would uh, be required to authorize the Texas Bullion Depository as issuer and ensure that the holder of the specie may use the specie as legal tender in payment of debt and, re and readily transfer the specie to another person. OK, that is huge. That's a huge development. We need to keep our eye on this. All right. So now, I mean, I have one, two, three, four, five, six more articles, but I'm going to leave it at that. Now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? That was a good episode, in my humble opinion. I hope you're all having a good day. Have a good Friday. I know you're going to be go out there eating, partying, dancing, maybe just reading a good book, but probably drinking some wine or something like that. Man, look, whatever you're doing, I hope that you're, you're receiving some love, some peace, some quiet, some good times. All right. And until next time, let's get to the money.